Hi, this is Katrina Sargent, owner and creator of Devil Doll Custom Creations. Today we're going to be doing a golden opal fall plaid pumpkin spice and live in my best life tumbler for epoxy or bright tone crystal -like users. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. As always, I will have everything linked in the description below, including my beginner's tutorials for epoxy and crystal -like users. If you're brand new, go watch those. Hit that bell notification so you're notified every time I post a new video, which is every Wednesday. I first learned how to do these painted plaids by Daniel Myers from Damn Fancy Creations. Go check out her channel, she is amazing. So these are the spray paint colors I'm using for my plaids. You start off in your lightest and you go to your darkest. So you're gonna base paint your color in your lightest color. It is technically the harvest peach for this fall tumbler. I lost that video, unfortunately. So this is how you do it on any base color. You're going to start with one inch painter's tape and you're gonna make sure that first line is straight. So I always pick it up and make sure it's straight because every other line is gonna be based off of that one line. Then you're gonna add a line of tape right next to that first line. You are gonna be removing that piece of tape. This is just to give you even spacing of your tape. So once you've added that piece, which I reuse around the entire tumbler as my spacer, once you get to the very last line, sometimes you're going to need to eyeball and readjust that line because it might not be 100% perfect. So how you do that is if it comes to that, you see how this one's slightly thinner than one inch than the other ones. I don't want it to look too different. So I remove that spacer and then I'm eyeballing where to put this last stripe evenly between the two. It's not gonna be 100% perfect, but it's very close and most people don't even see the difference. Here is my, the left is the cup we're gonna be doing. I have taped it off the same way. Then you're going to spray paint with your next lightest color. You're gonna to wanna to do a little spurst of paint so you don't get any drips. Always, always, always let your paints dry before removing tape throughout this entire video. Then I'm going to remove the tape once it is dry to reveal that harvest peach under. I am now gonna be doing horizontal lines the exact same way I did my vertical lines. I am reusing that spacer tape. I get a fresh new piece of tape on the lines that are staying on the tumbler. This just helps with bleeding of the paint so you don't have anything going under those tape line. But the spacer tape, absolutely reuse it. You're gonna do this the entire tumbler. If your bottom tape line hangs over, just fold it over that bottom edge. I normally tape off the bottoms completely, but if you're not liking that look, you can leave that tape off the bottom. Then you're gonna come and spray paint it the next color. This is your second to darkest color. You are leaving your tape on. Now you're going to be re-taping where your previous line tape was. So on your lightest color, you're going to re-tape that off. It's easy to see in person. It's a little hard to see in the video. Once you have that tape on all of those places, make sure you run a fingernail or your squeegee along those edges so you don't get any bleeding under your tape on the next color. Spray paint your darkest color last, let that dry, and then remove all of your tape. You see how the two oranges are slightly different shades? It turned out beautiful. Now is a perfect time to do your rims. So I take a sanding block and I sand off to see a slight stainless steel edge before I move on to epoxy or bright tone. This is just makes it so much easier. Next, I'm gonna be moving on to create my vinyl lines. 
So I create a rectangle and then I adjust it to my dimensions I want. I want two different colors cut out in this wide lines and a single color cut out in my thin line. So what I am doing is I am just resizing it to fit 0.062 by 11.75. Measure your tumbler, you might not need it as long, but I'd rather have it too long and cut away than not have it long enough. So now I am just duplicating my line. Then I select them all and I'm OCD, so I have them all lined up together, evenly spaced, and I'm gonna cut out double the amount of lines I need per color. These thin lines are extremely thin. I'm gonna do the exact same thing as I did with the thicker lines, but I'm only cutting these thin lines out in an orange to go along the edges of each of my paint lines. I'll show you in a second. So now I have all my vinyl cut out. My orange is my thin lines. My cream and maroon are my thick lines. So then you're just going to add each vinyl line vertically on your tumblers. So if you want to be more dramatic, I would suggest do your dark vinyl line over your lightest squares and then your light vinyl line over the darkest. I want it to be a little bit more subtle, so that's why I did my lightest over my light lines. You're going to do this all the way around your tumbler. And then you're going to do your horizontal lines. I pick a line that you want to start with. Make sure you cover that vinyl vertical line with your horizontal line. If you don't do this, you're going to see that color on your seam. So I stick to that seam starting and ending all of my horizontal stripes just so you have one place where all your vinyl comes together. When you're trimming up the top edge, make sure you are leaving that stainless steel bare. Your vinyl lines are going to be under your epoxy or bright tone. I'm moving on to my thin lines. I am just lining all of my paint lines with this thin vinyl lines. So I'm going to do all horizontal, all vertical. This is just so in case you had any bleed over or it's not 100% crisp and perfect paint lines, this just kind of disguises that and makes it look 100% straight and crisp. So once you have added all your vinyl lines, you are going to add it to your turner and epoxy or bright tone until you don't fill your vinyl lines anymore. This is important for the next step. Once you have done that, you're going to do a really good sanding until it's 100% smooth before you move on to the golden opal. I'm using the Tacket method. I use 70% Tacket, 
30% water. I already have it pre-mixed. So when I do attack it, I kind of slop it on at first and then I go in and brush away any extra, make sure I don't have any pulling up on the bottom lip, the top lip, and just make sure it is nice and streak free as much as possible. If you don't do this, it's going to dry differently and your glitters are not going to varnish the same way as the rest of your tumbler. Once you have it completely coated, you're going to let it sit off to the side and dry before you add your glitter. It's dry once it comes transparent and you have no more milkiness on the glue. I let mine dry for about 10 minutes or I use a hair dryer or heat gun from a far away to kind of speed up the process. And then I take my tea strainer and I add my ultra fine glitter to the entire tumbler. And then I just use my bare hand to varnish the glitter. You're just going to rub the glitters flat. That's how you're gonna get this beautiful golden opal color. Do this on the entire tumbler. Don't forget your bottoms. And then you're gonna to wanna to seal this in with a clear spray paint or CC DIY quick coat because sometimes it expels the epoxy or bright tone. If you're bright toning and you use a clear spray paint, you need to make sure it degasses 48 hours before you move on to your cup turner. Moving on to the decal. I got this bundle on designbundles.com. I will have it linked in the description below. So what I'm gonna wanna do is I wanna create the outside line. So I am just tracing my entire decal and I'm gonna trace the outside line only. This is gonna give me the exact size of the decal. Once I have this, I'm going to offset it with the offset button and I'm going to then change it until I'm happy with the size of offset. This offset is gonna be the white backing vinyl that I'm gonna add my water slide on top of. You don't have to do an offset of white. You could do the white vinyl, the exact size of your decal, but I wanted a little bit of white edge. So I'm going to change the color to white. You can add it on top of your decal just to make sure it fits correctly. So if you change the transparency, you can kind of see through it to make sure it is the size you want. If not, re-offset it until you're happy with the size. I'm going to offset the white layer again for my golden layer. Again, this is all personal preference of how big of the offset you want it. I'm going to then add this as a yellow layer. I'm cutting it out in reflective gold. This just is gonna give me the two different color choices. So when I cut it out, I know which one I'm doing. I kind of layer them to make sure I'm happy with what layers are visible. Then these are the vinyl layers we'll come back to in a second. I'm printing this off on clear water slide. So your preferences, you wanna make sure you're using a glossy paper and a photo setting. Those are the two biggest things on water slides to get the best quality print. And then you're gonna cut your layers out. So this is a glossy white vinyl. Change your settings to that. And then my yellow is a reflective metallic vinyl. Change your settings to that. I like to use contact paper as my transfer sheet. I have everything cut out. Before I can layer it though, I wanna make sure it's the correct way. So this bottom has like a little loop on the B. 
I'm gonna make sure everything's lined up correctly before I add it to my tumbler. You're going to then add your back layer first. Um, I'm using the hinge method, so make sure you have an overhang off your decal. This is why I love contact paper. You can add the backing back on the wax side so it's easy to remove and it doesn't stick to your decal. Lay your gold vinyl down and then you're gonna do the exact same thing for your white vinyl. This might take some readjusting, reshifting to get it to be 100% centered on that back layer. This is why I love the hinge method so much. Once you have it centered, you're gonna make sure that extra is on your tumbler well, and you're gonna hold it with one hand before you remove the backing. So then you can just fold it right over and it stays in the correct spot. Moving on to the water slide. You're gonna need a container with lukewarm or room temperature water. I love these cotton gloves, but you can use a rag or coffee filter. Once your water slide releases from the backing, you're going to get your vinyl layer wet so you can make minor adjustments to your water slide once it's on. So I add one corner of my water slide before I remove the entire backing sheet. This just kind of helps to make sure it is where you kind of want it. So you're only making micro adjustments, not big adjustments. Once you're happy with it, you're gonna take that rag or cotton glove and remove all of the water and air that is trapped between the white vinyl layer and your water slide. If you're doing bright tone, make sure you have all water off the rest of your tumbler as well. Once you are happy with it, you're gonna let this dry before moving on to your turner again. I hope everyone liked this tutorial. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions or comments, please write them in the comments. I do write back. Here's what that golden opal looks like in different lighting. It is stunning. Please like, share, subscribe. It means the world to me. And thank you everyone for your continued support.